welcome to my little sketchbook tour everybody. These are the drawings that I did when I was down in Cornwall on location and you're just going to see a quick little flick through of me um, showing you all the sketches from Mevagesi and Paul Perro and Port Lou and Port Isaac um, and just talking a little bit about the experience of being down there and then towards the end of the sketchbook there's the sketches that I did for these online workshops but I've kept them all together in the same in the same book so kind of all my Cornwall experiences through through creativity are all kept together and um, they're all done in a 40 by 30 sketchbook they're all using a very very similar process of marking out the big shapes putting the color on putting the tone on putting the detail on and um, yeah and it's just great to be able to share it with you and I hope you enjoy it so welcome everybody to my Cornwall sketchbook now before we begin this little sketchbook tour, let me just tell you a little bit about the background to these particular sketches. They've all been done since since October, so it's December at the moment, so they've been done over the last couple of months. The vast majority of them were drawn on location when we were down in Cornwall, we had a little holiday there in October, and then the remainder have been done as online workshop demonstration sketches with studio56boutique.com. Now in this sketchbook, um, it's a Fabriano hot press. It's 40 centimetres by 30 centimetres. It's the kind of sketchbook that I normally use. And every one of these has been done using a similar kind of process of sketching out the big shapes, putting on the medium shapes, putting on the colour, the tone, and then the detail. So here's the first one. And this is Mevagesi. Now we arrived in Mevagesi. We drove up from um, where we live in, in Hoylake and it's about a kind of five, five hour drive. If, if you're lucky, and we were lucky because the roads were pretty empty. And then this is a kind of elevated position, not far from where we'll be staying, looking down onto the town of Mevagesi. And this is my warm up sketch. In fact, probably the first couple of sketches were warm up sketches because it's a way for me to work out what I'm going to be looking for and what the stories are going to be. So from this sketch I can see that the houses and how all the houses are kind of jumbled together and the stories they tell and the relationship between them is going to be a big part of the things that I'm going to be discovering. Then this is the, the next sketch, this was done the following day and this is down in the harbour. So if I just flick back I'll give you some kind of idea of where this is. If you look down there's the harbour there. So beyond that house, it's just jutting out, I was sitting on the quayside looking across and this is so typical this is the kind of thing I was looking for when we went down to Cornwall where you can see the fishing boats and then the fishing boats are then framed by all these amazing buildings in the background just cascading away and then the little windows look like eyes kind of looking back at you so it's almost like an audience and you don't get that you can't work that kind of thing out unless you're there on location now this is Charlestown. Charlestown is a little bit further along the coast from Mevagesi. It's about kind of 45 minute drive. This is where they do a lot of the filming for Poldark. If you haven't seen Poldark, my wife absolutely loves it. It's a drama set in Cornwall in the kind of 18th century. And Poldark is the kind of the hero and he owns a mine and he's married to Esmeralda and it's, it's great. It's really good, I like it. So lots of the filming is done here because this harbour is very much still intact how it was, you know, 250 years ago. And this is just like obviously an old fishing boat, but I kind of wanted to create this really dark triangular frame here, which contrasts against the quayside, and then to try and create a sense of depth and space beyond with all the kind of rigging and the masts. So this was super, super fun to do. Then we went to Paul Perro, and this is a view on an elevated position, looking down, to the entrance to the harbour. So out here on the left hand side is the sea and on the right hand side it kind of goes into its inlet. And it's a real jumble of houses all on top of each other. And then obviously you've got the fishing boats down at the bottom. Great fun to do. This is also Paul Perro. This was done the same day as the previous one. Now the, the sketch that you've just seen my position was here. I was up here looking back. So here you can actually see this particular spot in the other sketch, which was there. So they're kind of opposite each other. Okay. And this one is a slightly calmer 
more tranquil kind of composition in many, many ways. The, the colours are a lot more subtle. And this guy popped up. Now, Cornwall is full of seagulls. It's one of the things that you notice. And they're hugely overfed. They love chips. They love pasties. They don't leave you alone. You're warned not to feed them. Because I think if you feed them, they kind of get a bit aggressive then. So you, you're told not to. But my wife was given given this particular guy a little bit of a little bit of a, a pasty that, that we were nibbling on at the time. So he was kind of around, and then there was loads more of them as well. So I just sketched this guy because he was just standing on top of that that little piece of wood, and it kind of it kind of makes the subject. You know, the subject is very much about the seagull and everything that's framed around it. So it's part of the storytelling element. Now this is Port Isaac. Port Isaac is where they filmed Doc Martin. And this is down on the kind of quayside. And apparently this, this bar here and around the back there's a pub and it features quite a lot in the, in the drama. And often when you see them drinking in the pub, they're kind of in this little bit here where you can kind of look out of the window and you can see, see the bay. And also there was a film made about 10 years ago called Fisherman's Friend. And that was again filmed in Port Isaac. And this pub is the one that features because it was bought and then re, re, resold again um, in, in the film. It's part, it's part of the story. But this was just great because it, Port Isaac is just stunning. It's beautiful. It's full, full of stories, full of character. And you start noticing the little bits of rope and the little cracks at the bottom and the seagulls flying and the netting. And it's just putting it all together to tell the story of the place. And it's your story. Now, this is going back to Mevagesi. And this is more like a portrait of one of the fishing boats. And these fishing boats go off and they catch lobsters. And you know they're catching lobsters because you see all these lobster crates here on the quayside. So these become a big part of it. But also a huge big part are all these inflatable buoys. Because when they go out, they, they, they drop the crates down, but they need to know where the crates are. So they have these boys floating on the surface of the water so they can identify where they've dropped their crates. So they have loads of these on the back and they're all different colours and they're just really interesting to draw. And then down here you've got all the shells and the pebbles and you've got the tyres coming up to protect the boats and you've got the ladders and the rope and you've got the buildings in the background with the little eyes in the windows. So it's telling the story of the place. Now this is also Mevagesi, but this is kind of going into the town centre. So we were staying just up the hill here. And this again is very typical of the kind of the Cornish towns, very narrow, narrow passageways, narrow little alleyways. And, and you've got to get your cars around these corners to get to the parking space. And just the signage is really interesting as well. You know, leading this way to the harbour, little satellite dishes that are tucked over on the top so it's kind of bringing it all together great fun to do bit of a tricky spot this as well because obviously as you can imagine i'm kind of right in the middle of the road i wasn't really i was tucked up against a building but it was quite a squeeze trying to get the cars past but thankfully they're only doing about one mile an hour again this is mevagesi so just a different perspective now on the other side looking looking across the quayside and again this is very much a portrait of all the boats in the harbour. Now all the ones so far have been drawn on location but these are now the ones that I've been doing for Studio 56 for the online workshops. So this was done from a photograph and there's a workshop of this. Again this is Mevagesi looking in the opposite direction to some of the other ones and really focusing in on those strong bright oranges and reds on this boat being framed by the buildings in the background and again noticing all the little bits of detail this is back to port isaac now if you remember the port isaac sketch before that's the building there so i was sitting just around the corner just sketching that view there and then this is an elevated position looking down on the bay and i've got doc martin's house just behind me so this is different, completely different from the other one. This is very much about the space and the sweep of the bay coming round. Now this is a place called Port Lou, which is not far from Mevagesi. And these are two boats on the quayside. This is Jasmine, which goes off and catches lobsters. And this is Fowey, 
which if you pardon the expression, goes off and catches crabs. And I know this because I was there on location drawing and I was, I didn't draw this one on location, I drew, I drew another one, which is in the sketchbook because it's been sold. But when I was doing this as an online workshop, I was able to remember all these stories and all these things because I'd been there and I'd sat there and I'd experienced it. So I knew the things that were important. So I knew that the rope was important, the masts were important, these little houses were important. That cone was important because there was cones everywhere restricting where people could go. The signage was important. This little piece of wood here was important. And you wouldn't get that if you were just working from the photo. You need to, well, I needed to kind of be there in order to put all of this into the sketch. And the final sketch I want to show you is Paul Perrault. And again, this was done as an online workshop. So for this one, I'm working from a photograph. And this is really the end of the key. It's where the key, the harbour kind of finishes and then all the water kind of comes out of this, this bridge here, this little archway from, from the hills behind. So all the boats would be just kind of further out here. But I didn't really want to put the boats in this because I wanted it to be very much about this old sandstone bridge and all the buildings falling away and then noticing all the different patterns and textures that you get down here at the bottom. So these are all the little stone, stones and pebbles and then they form into rocks and then it gets darker and deeper and then eventually it's, you've got this sense of mystery around the bridge but down here you've got the embankment and how it sweeps up and then it joins all of these amazing sandstone bricks and there we've got Clive. Clive's a seagull and he's appeared in the picture. So thank you guys for joining me in my Cornwall sketchbook tour. I hope you've enjoyed looking at them. It's been great fun for me to do. Okay, and bye for now.